Hello, my name is Mike Hodgson. I'm the CEO of Sarabi Gold, TSX and AIM listed company. And I'm here today talking about our news flow of the last uh, sort of six months, particularly. It's been a good period of time for us. We've uh, Our share price has gone from a, a 22p back in September through 50p at the moment. So we've enjoyed a, a nice little run. That's really been driven by the great news that we actually got our mining license, our mining permit at Coringa renewed for another three years, which has uh, been great news. And that's obviously giving us the company confidence to move forward with our uh, much talked about plans, which I've talked about in the past, about putting in an ore sorter there and the capital development we're going to do. So that's going to move our company. We're going to try and do 50, 000, 40 thousand ounces this year and with a view to actually expand and be up to 60 thousand ounces in the next 18 to 24 months. Mike, good to see you here. So very good to see you, Phil. Stop, I haven't seen you for a while, physically. No, no, not since uh, uh, one to one, I think, in uh, maybe a year yeah. ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, anyway, here we are in uh, Toronto Town. It's quite easy to forget that you're also TSX listed. It is. It is. It's been, uh, it, we sort of very quietly did that maybe in 2010, 2011, yeah. I believe. Yeah. But you're going to use that to your advantage. You've hired a, a new biz dev person over here. Yes, that's right. right. Yes. Okay. And what, what are they? What are you going to try and do in terms of, you know, t retelling, telling the story over here in North America? Well, Andrew Cove is our new VP Business Development. He's also doing investor relations, which is something which I think you know, obviously has been a bit, a bit sort of lacking for us mm -hmm. as well. Um, it, it's all about reigniting the listing. I mean, we've had it for a while. People have obviously kept saying to me, well, you know, what, what, what are you doing with it? What are you doing with it? Mm. You know, we, we, we listed in 2011 El Dorado, who were in Brazil. They started in Brazil. They were obviously uh, a, a very, uh, well, still up, but a very recognized company. It was a huge endorsement when they put a placing into Sarabi in 2012. That got them about 20% of the company. And then on the back of that, we listed on uh, an IPO here. And it was very successful because with a company of that credibility, yeah. it was an endorsement. We were then a development company. Polito wasn't back into, in, in, in production back then. It, we were developing, growing resource, et cetera. Um, just after we did that, the market just died, just completely yeah. died here. So we never really got a chance to use the listing. That said, we did acquire a company called Kenai in 2015, which was TSX listed. Mm -hmm. And I think that was very important. It made that a much easier transaction because we were TSX listed, albeit not with much float over here at all. Um, that happened. And I think now we're, we're, we're finding a lot of interest here. And I, I do believe going forward with, you know, likely projects, acquisitions, any M&A partners, it's almost certainly likely to be a TSX listed company. There's very few in London yeah. uh, on AIM involved in South America. So uh, again, so we, we do want to basically remind people we're here and what we're doing and we're getting some success now. We're, we've got a, people can see the growth now coming. Yeah. Um, so um, yeah, time to re-engage. Right, Trains Left the Station, your producer, I think producer stories are gonna be, especially in this kind of gold price in, in environment, very interesting to people in terms of a lower risk um, you know, yeah. investment, right? So. Tell us what's been happening on the ground, because like I said, it's been a while since we, we, we spoke back in September. Um, new license, great. What's it allowing you to do? And obviously it took a while to get it, but you've, you've secured it. Yeah, well, it, it's, it's not the full license. The full license is what's called the installation license. And that's mm -hmm. actually going to allow us to expand our production to the full and build a process plant. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been talking to you for about two years now. We've had that idea. We're not going to build a process plant. <coughs> We're not going to spend $40 million on a process plant. With, you know, we have a market cap of 40, which is better than it was, but it's still, it, you know, we, don't, we haven't got that sort of money. And uh, so we've actually gone for what I call a capital light approach. What actually happened around, uh, over the last 18 months, the road got paved, which meant the link between Polito and, 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 and Coringa got a lot easier. The trucking cost fell because of the amount of trucks that were in the region. <coughs> and most importantly, we got underground at Coringa mm. and the ore body, the vein, was so amenable to ore sorting. We thought, well, this is the way for ore for us. We've got plant capacity at Polito. We should put in an ore sorter. Uh, we did our own test books, we had an ore sorter at Polito. We did it at Coringa. Results were absolutely amazing. So that was it. So we thought, so we changed from a 40 million ounce CapEx project to a five million ounce cap, uh, five million dollar, sorry, cap, um, capital project, mm -hmm. which should be music to the ears of shareholders. It's something we can fund out of uh, cash flow, maybe a little bit of debt, no more dilution uh, for the foreseeable future. So that's our plans, and this is how we're going to move in a very, very cheap way from thirty to sixty thousand ounces. 
I said, well, well there's, there's the thing, Mike. People want to understand how you move from 30 to 60. Not talk about it, actually do it, right? So you, you've, you've got a few assets. We've, we haven't even talked about the expiration, which we will in, 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 a, in a bit. Um, how in this market do you kind of maintain margins? How do you, you know, assure yourselves and the market that you're going to be doing this economically? Well, grade. That's the delta with what's happened to us. Our grade, the grade occurring is amazing. Uh, so, you know, and, and ore sorting, <clears throat> you're taking a sort of seven gram, eight gram ore body and you're doubling the grade. So it's all about grade, quality, quality, quality. And we're, like I'm here today, spending a lot of time with uh, companies that so we're looking at trucks so we can diminish the size of our, our, our development underground, getting costs down, moving less waste. Uh, and then she's getting the grade up. So it's all about quality. It's not, it's, it's funny, it's because I think the mining industry has got so kind of obsessed in the last 20 years about economies of scale and size, size, yeah, size. Yeah. We're doing it the opposite way. We go for, we're chasing quality and we always have. So we're trying to sort of reduce our costs by moving less material. And what we do move, bloody good stuff, you know, really high quality. So grade is our margin. So we're focusing, we're all sorting as much as we can at Polito to get the grade up before it goes to the process plant. Because remember, we've got a process plant that does 600 tonnes per day. The plant doesn't care whether it's 3 grams or 10 grams. It's the same cost. But if you're pushing through 10 grams or 8 grams, you know, obviously your margins are amazing. Uh, so that's the objective. And we can get that process plant, which its previous record was 40,000 ounces in 2019, the year before the pandemic. <clears throat> using all sorters, an all sorter at Polito, which we've got, and the all sorter that's coming to Coringa, which I just spoke to Comex, it's on the water, it's on the way to Brazil right now. Mm -hmm. If we can get that up and running by Q4 this year, it's going to make a, it's not going to make a big difference to this year's production, but next year it'll allow us to go from 40 to 50, and then even by the end of next year we'll be at an annualised rate approaching 60. Now at that point, <clears throat> our process plant will be full, and we'll need to think about plant expansion, but I think it's a short-term objective. That that's really great. You know, it's a, it's a really meaningful change. If, well, certainly if you can fund fund that from cash flow and maybe a little bit of debt, which you can service yes. properly, that that's fantastic. Um, but you, I kind of need to understand what the kind of end game is here. So because it's like maybe processing higher quality and higher margin answers is fantastic. But if you kind of you're in for a long period of ploughing it back in the ground. It's, it makes it a little harder to get excited about. So building up cash reserves to, I mean, you've just been through kind of three difficult years off of, you know, COVID and yeah. logistics issues and all sorts of things going on in, in Brazil and South America more, more broadly. But building up cash reserves to, to change the fortunes of the company, change the options available to the company in terms of maybe there's other projects you want to do. Maybe there's a lot more exploration that you want to do. Can, can you talk to us about your thinking about you know the next three years? You know when you plan out ahead, rather than just sort of this you know the will to survive and a bit more, yeah, yeah, to, yeah. Because sixty ounces, are, sixty thousand ounces is, is is meaningful, and uh, but but it's it's hardly pulling up any trees. I, yeah. know, I accept that. Um, <clears throat> well, yeah, we've got you know around Polito, and it's, I, I mean I firmly believe Polito and South Chica, but uh, Polito and Coringa. Coringa, I believe, is I think we're not scratching the surface there. I, mean, I actually think I keep saying we're going to do this. I don't want to lose sight of the fact that we could put the process plant there one day. That's what the, this yeah. LI is important. I think Korean could be a, a 1 to 1.5 million ounce deposit, which will, which, will, which will accelerate that production a lot. It just needs drilling out, and I'm sure we'll find a lot more there. But, but, yeah, but your thought is it's going to be more of the same in terms of what you used to be, in terms of what you know how to do. That's, it's more of the same. It would be, I mean, but I think both between those two assets and maybe satellites around Polito, we yeah. could get this company organically to 100,000 ounces. <clears throat> but that said, you know, at the same time, we're always going to be interested in sensible M&A and, and opportunities for the company yeah. uh, as well. So we, we, that door's open. I, and I do believe uh, that, you know, once we're, people can see us being a very, very uh, well-run, profitable company producing 50, 60,000 ounces, mm. the phone will be ringing as well. So we, again, we'll be, we'll be fielding sort of interest from other companies. And that's, there's growth that way as too. So, you know, it's pedal to the metal on exploration. We've got the Greenfield Exploration Alliance with Valley, which we hope is going to uh, go into a second year, <clears throat> which we've been speaking to them, or we'll be speaking to them this week as well. That's great, because that's, 
That's something quite different. That's big stuff. That's, that's we're getting yeah. a free carry on the copper, which they're doing. Right. But we've done a lot of exploration yeah. on satellites all around Polito, and that's why I've just made that comment. You know, I think we can find two or three more Politos in the Polito tenements. Yeah. <clears throat> and Karinga is a very, very undrilled deposit. Right. And we've already got half a million ounces. So remind me, okay, remind me what the deal structure was there. Obviously, they're, they're after copper, you want gold. Um, uh, what's that, what have they done in, in, in year one? Well, we the spent, we, they've, they've funded us for uh, virtually $5 million. We've drilled um, a, a mo about 11,000 metres, 12,000 metres. We've probably put about half of that in, sorry, 13,000 metres. We've put half of that into Matilda, the copper deposit. We've got what's called an exploration potential there, uh, which is a very loose res estimation, I can't say resource estimation, of around 80 million tonnes to about 0.3% copper. Some of it's over 0.4. Now that's sort of really interesting grades because yeah. that's kind of commercial grades for porphyries. Yeah. The question now is finding more of it <clears throat> and finding volume. That's very much, the door is very much open to do that there. Now, they may want to continue on that, but in the meantime, some of that, the rest of those meters were drilled on a number of other five different properties which we had, which probably didn't have much or had a lot less copper uh, of interest, but let's say, but we found some nice looking gold mm -hmm. possibilities. Mm -hmm. So we'll be moving those forward. And again, one or two of those do look really interesting that they could be uh, new, new projects. Right, okay. So you, you'll know this week in terms of whether they're going to extend that into you. We won't know this week. Um, Valley are a big organization and they take, right. they take a while to make a decision. Right. Uh, so they won't, they, we won't know, but we'll have a, we'll, they've got 60 days now to actually decide what to do. Now we've got, we've got plenty to do in the meantime, but they've, right. they've got to come back to us in the next two months regarding, um, uh, you know, if they want to proceed or not. Okay. But all the indications are they do. The, the complication of Valley is the restructuring of the company when well, we've got mm. a bit caught up in that. So we're, it's kind of find, finding, uh, getting, uh, uh, you know, speaking to the right person and getting, uh, which we are, but that, the person involved there is still trying to sort of, she, uh, she's new and trying to find her feet a little bit. So, mm -hmm. but hopefully we'll be, uh, yeah, we'll good news there. Okay, fine. And in terms of, if I'm looking at this year, I, I get the ambition in terms of where you want to go size-wise. And like I say, I think people will be looking to you to kind of signal or at least have a narrative around, you know, how do we go beyond that? Because like I say, you know, so it's been kind of like spinning the wheels and trying to work out how do we kind of... How do You've we got to get relevant. Yeah, it's, it's relevance. You, relevance. 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 Work, it's got to get work. relevance. I mean, yeah. that's the point. I mean, it used to be 100,000. What's it now? 200? I don't know. You know, but we've certainly got to get through the 100 and become... Something of well, that's yeah, that's uh, because at the end of the day, the life cycle of a junior is you've got to get big either by acquiring or being acquired, yeah. and, that, and, that, and that's it. So we've got to be we've got to be in the game for for a long time. We've been out the game because we've just yeah. been too small and not relevant. Yeah, yeah, and well, and I think you had you know, a few a few issues as well. So in terms of like the continuing to be able to do business in Brazil and specifically where you are, mm -hmm. have those kind of hurdles been overcome? You are now. Social license is where you want it to be. There's no kind of mixed messaging or bumps along the I, road to come there. No, I, I think the uh, I think the very fact that we battled our way through, we did something yeah. last year which nobody's done. Yeah. You know, we we've actually um, <clears throat> we've got all the stakeholders on. I mean, it wasn't easy. Well, yeah, we no. got all the stakeholders on side. We had, I think, I spoke to the the environmental department. I think we had something like 300 meetings with stakeholders. You know, a huge yeah. amount of work. Yeah. Uh, to, uh, and just basically get everybody happy and indigenous communities, 10 different groups of indigenous communities who some of them wouldn't even be in the same room together. You know, mm. it, it's been quite tough to get this done. But, yeah. you know, we got the final agreements in December and I think the willingness to actually get the, the, um, the trial mine license extended for three more years yeah. with a window for that to be expanded even more, not expand, but the throughput, the, 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 the tonnage limit being increased yeah. is a great indication that you know, nobody wants to see this project stop. They want to see it run and go. So I think, um, yeah, we've earned that. But we've been, there, we've been in the region a long time. We're, we're not a big company, but we're big there. You know, it's a great phrase you use that. Yeah, we've earned that. Yeah, we've earned the right to do it because it's kind of. Like, I don't think any of the things that you've been dealing with were self-inflicted. No, it was definitely market-inflicted and obviously more local issues around not just COVID and, and transportation issues and environmental issues, all of that sort of stuff. I don't think it was any self-inflicted, but it, it, you've done it kind of done the hard yourself. How, how do you view yourselves? And 
you know, how do you, what would you say to people looking at this and going, look, these are, this is the type of people we are. So any issues in the future, you know we'll get through them. We know how to mine. We know how to, you know, manage the process. The question, if we get an, an economy, if we get a market which is, I guess, kind to junior miners, we could go on a good run here because we're equipped to do so. I mean, I mean that's what I'm sort of listening to what I'm hearing from you, but how, how would you pitch to yourself? Well, I think the things I really look forward to now, um, we're, we're, look, we're very hands-on people. We, we, we get stuck in. We don't sit in the city and wait for it to happen. We actually, we, we spend a ton of time actually mm. at site. And um, one big thing that's going to happen this year, which is great news, we're going to get a power line put in, mm. which is going to come straight to Polito. That's going to cut our cost dramatically. Mm. You know, we, we, power is the second, diesel consumption is the most, uh, is the second, after labor is the second highest cost we've got. Yeah. That's just going to go away. It's going to rock our world. It really yeah. is. It's going to make a big difference. And then it will happen at Coringa, which is all great on your ESG statistics as well. We're an underground mine with a tiny footprint, basically not using diesel anymore, and the power's all hydro. I mean, it's like an ESG dream. Yeah. You, know, that we, you know, people can look at that and go, well, that, that's really good. And I, and I think with the support of all the stakeholders that we've actually got as well, you know, um, I, I think we're in a really good place. I do. It's, it's funny thing. It's like when you, I'm always interested in the way people frame things. It's like you say, oh, that's going to reduce our costs. I, I kind of like think for me, it'd be like, that's going to increase our margins. Oh, so it's going, to, it's going to reduce our yeah. costs. Yeah. Great. But, but the so what is, so that is going to increase yeah. our margins. Yeah. Yeah. And that's kind of what, what you're looking at is trying to get those economies of well, we, across the board. I, mean, right? I don't I mean to see if I want to crucify me for saying this, but <clears throat> I would imagine we'll get $100 off our ASIC, which will bring us down to. Right. You know, four hundred, which is like a fourteen hundred, which we'll have a five six hundred dollar margin on the ounces, and people can do the sums. If we can keep that going, and we're doing sixty thousand ounces, it's making some good money. You know, now we're going to mm. go through the cash this year because we are putting all that capex into Coringa, yeah, uh, admittedly, uh, and doing some exploration as well. But but you know, come this time next year, you know, with we're doing forty and trying to do fifty. Um, yeah, I mean, they're going to be high margin ounces. And people go, oh, it's underground, it's high grade, you know, this narrow vein, it's difficult. But the grades, you know, 10, 12 grams per ton. Yeah. That's, um, you know. Okay. What, so just in terms of, so I, I kind of think there's enough um, targets short term. In terms of that kind of um, ambition component, I say you've got, to hit the, you've got to be at least aiming, or at least talking of aiming for 100,000 yeah. ounces and doing the things which suggest that you can do that. It's not just chat. Um, what are the kind of options on the table for you in, in, in that region? Because it, it's, you've got a particular skill. Mm -hmm. Are there assets? Are there other things that you could be doing in terms of just driving that scale ambition? Well, you know, I always look at, there's private opportunities, but they're always so difficult to sort of value. That's one of the main problems. Mm. But public companies, not a lot really near where we are. But I, again, I go on to say, <clears throat> We're, we're doing what's called a capital light program here. You know, we are, we, we, we're, all, we're growing Coringa. Polito's 30,000, just doing it, that's it. And we'll do for however long. Um, I mean, again, we just did a new resource, a, a new resource reserve at Polito. Six years of mine life in reserves, never been that good. Uh, we, we, we started the mine 20 years ago with a resource of 400,000 ounces. We've mined 400,000 ounces and it's still got a resource of 500,000 ounces. So it's one of those. Mm. Coringa will be the same, but Coringa, as I said, I, we, could, we could just go on a big drilling campaign there. And <clears throat> I'm sure, it, well, even without the drilling today, we could open up two more parts of Coringa today mm. and get us to 40,000 40, ounces at Coringa in a year if we wanted to throw a ton of money at it. Mm. We, we can't because we haven't, we're doing this out of treasury. We're yeah. doing this on, a, on, a, on, a, on the way. And that's basically what we've taken soundings from shareholders. That's what they, that's the appetite they've got. That's for it, now. Yeah. for now. Yeah. But that said, there's nothing to stop us. We're gonna do some drilling at Coringa. And, and you know, that's definitely something that's open in the future. We, we could accelerate Coringa a lot. We could drill it more. We can turn it into a million ounce deposit, I'm convinced. Mm. And then you've got a series of attack points along the strike. You could have four mini mines at the same time. Mm. Nothing would stop you producing then at Coringa being a, a 50, 60,000 ounce mine mm. with or 70 and get us to 100 organically. Mm. And I, again, what I said before, with all the work, the sort of the spin offs from Valley and what we've found, the prospects we've got in around Polito, we've got two, yeah. you know, I, I believe organically if we can get to 100,000 ounces. 
Um, uh, and, and, you know, and the, the rate at which we do that will be dependent on where the funding comes from, whether it's just purely from cash flow or we, we do raise some money or we do what. I mean, I mean, interested in the, the kind of the TSX component again, coming back to full circle to where, where the beginning of the conversation, because it's a pretty tired market, exhausted market. There's been yes, a lot of value yes, yes. here. But looking at producers and I guess the extremely de risk um, uh, potential that that provides a newish market to you. Um, and what the brokers say, and I know you're pounding the streets over the next three days, mm -hmm. um, Andrew, and um, I'd love it if you could come on and tell us what the feedback is there, if it's the same as your existing share, mainly, you know, AIM yes. yeah. focused shareholders, because I imagine, imagine it's a changing market here. Well, I worked sure here. I was based here for three years in the, in the, in the 2000, like 2006, yeah. 2005, 2008. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's going to be. I've not. I mean, I've done. A, we've done a couple of non-deal marketings here. We tried to sort of when we did when we raised money in 2021 in London. We tried to do some marketing here. No interest at all. Yeah. Um, so it will be interesting to see what the appetite's like. And uh, yeah, I'd, I'd really like to come back and say, you know, are we are we of interest now? I yeah. hope I hope we are. I mean, I think people, Toronto loves Brazilian stories, yeah. Yeah. and they can see us as the next kind of like potential consolidator. Yeah, uh, or Colin Solis AT, if it's such a word. Well, let, let, well let, let, let's see. maybe maybe we could hook up again once you're sort of mm. back from your travels, yeah. and we'll do a kind of run through with pretty pictures. You know, just remind people what it is that you've got and how each of those gets developed out. Because okay. I think there's something there's something there always has been something quite interesting here, if you are allowed a good run at it. Right? Yeah. And it feels like it might be the time of the year. Yeah, we've say, always often had a bit of a sort of one, one step forwards, one step sideways. Yeah, and yeah. I, but I, I do believe, and I, I said with, with a degree of confidence, although I didn't have all the, or wasn't in possession of all the facts last time we chatted before Christmas, that you know, we, 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 we felt, right, we're in good shape now. And you know, that was borne out by our announcements in December and January. Yeah. We had the resource estimate done. We are at the moment so preparing a new 43-101 for Coringa as well, make that nice and fresh as well. So we're going to have yeah. two mines, fresh 43-101s, great technical sort of status for both of them. Uh, hopefully we'll get the Valley deal renewed. Uh, and then um, it'll be just about expanding Coringa and, um, and that's it. And it's, it's such a great ore body. We're just getting positive. It's funny in mining. You always, you all seem to be sort of having to explain what went wrong, you know, with, yeah. with, with most CEOs have to say, oh, yeah. <laughs> unfortunately, um, you know, oh, this machine broke down or we didn't, the ore body and the drilling didn't work out, whatever. Coringa's completely, it's a positive, it's, it's, a po it's constantly positive news. Uh, well, this, you know, we've got drilling and yet, yet, you know, the ore body continues and the drill holes said the grade was lower and actually reality it's higher. So it's nice to work, work on a, a deposit that actually is, so far, touch wood, Giving us, giving us good, uh, uh, good, good, good feed, good, well, go good get return. After it. Go get after Thank it. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, <laughs> come back and tell us all about it. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Matt.